courtroom clips you're witnessing went viral, and though you've probably seen them, no one has ever seen the shocking exclusive footage we obtained that reveals the full story behind the unpredictable case. Well, you're one of the most evil person I've ever sat across the table from. No. You're not getting out of jail. It makes you me physically sick to look at you. Do the DNA test that will prove me Don't right. tell me how to do my job. Yeah. I watch forensic files. Do you believe everything they put on TV is real? How stupid like, are you? Yeah. Really, Isabella, does that make any <laughs> sense to you? Stop calling me Isabella. I'm That's your name. It's, no, it's not. You've come in here trying to act like you're so god smart. This is Isabella Guzman. In approximately three seconds, she will be confronted, resulting in one of the strangest moments in an interrogation we've ever seen. Sir, do you recognize, do you recognize this? What the? I'm back out here for a second. Do you what recognize? Yeah, she's my daughter. What's her, what's her name? Isabella. Is he insane? No, Samantha. You're gonna ruin my whole life because I have some random crazy like me. Your life? ended last night when you decided you'll kill your mother you left her to die brutally on a bathroom i did floor. not murder anyone in one of the most brutal acts of violence the state of colorado has ever seen a teenage girl viciously takes the life of her own mother inside their family home it's an incomprehensible crime but what authorities find to be even more disturbing is that the suspect claims to be a completely different person who didn't have anything to do with the gruesome killing. As the unbelievable investigation begins to unfold, it becomes increasingly apparent that not everything is as it seems, and behind the diabolical act lies a most insane and unpredictable motive. Oh, you people suck. And that probably is crazy. I'm gonna go somebody else. What the fuck? It was a typical summer's evening on Wednesday, August 28th, 2013, in Aurora, Colorado. 47-year-old Yunmi Hoi returned to her home around 9.30, bringing dinner for her husband, 40-year-old Ryan Hoy. Working another tiring day at her photography studio at the Aurora Town Center Mall, she looked forward to spending some time with her family, also consisting of her daughter and Ryan's stepdaughter, 18-year-old Isabella Guzman. However, the teenager had a more sinister agenda for the night. Ryan tells his wife that Isabella is home, but he's unsure of exactly where she is. Yunmi suggests that she and Ryan take a walk after she showers, to which he agrees. Only a few short minutes go by before the unthinkable happens. Ryan is enjoying his dinner when a violent pounding sound begins to shake the house, followed by a haunting scream. He quickly sprints upstairs, where his wife's screams are only intensifying as she calls his name for help. Ryan's adrenaline is racing as he finally reaches the bathroom, but the door is locked. He makes several attempts to break in, but someone is pushing against it, ensuring that they can finish the gruesome act taking wow. place behind the door. Still, Ryan continues trying to get in, hoping to come to his wife's aid. At the same time, he dials 911. It seems almost impossible to break into the room as the sounds of a brutal fight fills the home, but then, Ryan makes a shocking discovery. In the midst of the terrifying ordeal, he's horrified to see blood pouring out from underneath the door. And now the screams mm. have slowly transformed into an eerie silence. Finally, the door opens. 18-year-old Isabella stands over her mom's lifeless body with a bloodied knife in hand. She doesn't utter a word. In the blink of an eye, she runs out of the room past Ryan, who's in an absolute state of shock. The bathroom is covered in blood, where Yoon Mi's body is lying on top of a baseball bat. When police arrived, Isabella was nowhere to be found, and so began a manhunt for the teenager. Although that would only last one day, as they located Isabella over 12 hours later, hiding in a parking garage off of South Parker Road. But when they actually sat down for an interrogation, they had no idea of exactly who they were going to be speaking with or what was going to happen in this roller coaster of an investigation. The following never before seen footage has been analyzed by a qualified team, including a licensed professional counselor and a licensed attorney. You left her to die brutally on a bathroom. I did floor. not murder anyone. 
Please how does that stop feel? accusing just, me uh, of just this. Just tell me how that feels. Please fingerprint me. Please fingerprint me. Please fingerprint me. I will show you that I am not this freaky, horrible person. I want to meet my boyfriend. He's probably worried about me. You aren't going to meet anybody. I wish you could help us just make sense. That's all. When you prove that I am not her, I'll be able to go. Isabella states that her name is actually Samantha Gonzalez and that she is 15 years old. However, the detectives are well aware that this is not the truth. So she's 110 pounds? That's really skinny. I'm 148 pounds. Isabella, please. Don't call me Isabella. That's, really That's your crazy. name. My name is not Isabella. My name is Samantha. There are people in this world that look alike, you know? Mm. You guys are not, like, all-knowing. You don't know everything. You're just accusing me of all this stuff that I didn't do. We know what you we we know what you did and we know who you are. We know how it Apparently happened. Apparently not, because you guys are completely wrong. You got the wrong girl. No, we don't. We don't have the wrong girl, and you know that. No, I don't. How did it feel? How did what feel? When you did what you did. How did it feel? I Make didn't feel kill good? anybody. That was disgusting. Did it feel good? It's disgusting. You guys really think I'm a murderer? Yeah, we're not joking. Did it make you feel powerful? Yeah. Just you. Yes or no? Simple question. Did it make you feel powerful to do what you did? Oh, my God. I did not kill anyone. Can you guys stop, like, interrogating me? We're just going to keep going around and around. And I'm really just trying to get fingerprinted so I can meet mm -hmm. my boyfriend. So you can prove to him. Would you like us just to leave, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you just like us to leave? We don't have the same fingerprints. We're not the wouldn't same you like person. us all just to go away, rewind back 12 hours, and have this never happen? <laughs> We'd all like that. Got her, dumbass. Uh, I wish I could have, like, not walked through the parking garage so you would have not mistaken me for being someone else. Or we're past, we're, 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 we're way past right that. We're even not going to acknowledge that. Worst shortcut of my life. What Isabella fails to mention is that she wasn't merely walking through the parking garage, but rather hiding. And in addition to locating the suspect, police discovered an array of items relating to the brutal crime that Isabella also failed to conceal. This is not going to go anywhere. You guys keep accusing me of being this girl, and I'm not her. What'd your mother do? You're just repeating yourselves over and over. And we're not going to acknowledge the fact that you're not telling us who you are. We're, we're moving right past that. The detectives don't spend any time trying to build rapport with Isabella, which can damage their ability to get her to speak honestly with them. Not only that, but they appear to be jumping straight into a part of the read technique where they reject her lies so that she doesn't become entrenched in repeating them and accusing her. To start an interrogation this way is very unusual. They may be trying a few different techniques to see what works, but uh, so thank you for the resub, six months. Enrico, thank you for the five running on opium. Thank you for the four. Appreciate y'all. Was, was it the weed? Did you like the weed? When offering weed. to be fingerprinted, Isabella makes a declaratory statement indicating that she feels confident. This could mean that she strongly believes what she's saying. When someone has schizophrenia, they often experience hallucinations and delusions that cause them to hear, see, or feel things that do not exist. Delusions can lead to strong or beliefs or perceptions like that are not based in disorder. reality. This altered perception of the world can create a stark contrast between their experiences and what others perceive, leading to a profound disconnect from shared reality. What weed? Just like you. you. Know, like the marijuana in your place? <laughs> What? Is that what it was? <laughs> marijuana. Christ's sake, oh, you had so the, weird. You had Not master schizo. bedroom in the house. I'm only schizo when well, I play FC24. I am not this girl. Well, oh, my God. I am not bedroom. this girl. Explain that. Who does that? I am not this girl. What kind of a horrible parent does that? Gives up the master bedroom to room? your daughter. My fault. You know what? Whoever this person is that you're accusing me of being is probably really terrible, but... Didn't your mother give you a job? Didn't she teach you? Didn't she give you a job, give you employment? My mother's name is Serena. And that's the way you thank her? The shocking secrets that Isabella kept would slowly but surely unravel. For now, detectives simply want to know why she committed such an unbelievable crime. But it seems that not even she can answer this question. This can't be happening to me right now. This can't be happening. This can't. It is. I never killed anybody. You killed your mom last no, night. No, I did not. Yep. No, I did not. We're going to be able to prove it. Yes, uh, we, are like gonna be able, we are going innocent. to be able to prove it. Prove me innocent. No, the you police... will prove me innocent. We have, a, we have a very solid investigation, okay? 
Okay. Um, in this case, will be um, will be proven beyond a reasonable doubt, and you will probably spend the rest of your life in prison. That's what's going to happen to you. Part of the Reed technique is to present irrefutable evidence to trap the suspect in their lies. However, here the detectives are using unsure and uncertain language, such as we're going to prove it rather than we can prove it, which won't be as effective. As well, the Reed technique teaches detectives to avoid talking about the consequences and to minimize the crime in order to get the suspect's defenses down and to keep them talking. By already threatening punishment, the suspect loses any incentive to keep talking. Throughout all of this, Isabella has remained confident in her denials. It appears that detectives may have been upset by the crime when they started the interview and then grew frustrated because Isabella isn't budging. Mm. And now they're letting their emotions lead them. So far, this is really better than me. I would have flipped that fucking practice. table over and made her and head come through the middle of that bitch. Following any actual plan or technique. Isabella states that she will soon be proven innocent. In the meantime, she wishes to see her boyfriend, although future revelations would reveal that this would be easier Fuck said than done for one very strange reason. Yeah. <laughs> so what we give you a few minutes to think yeah, about? her hair would have went through. Okay. But I would have tried, though. True. It definitely would have been flipped over, though. Truth. Oh, my dear. And that's the story you're going to stick with? It's the truth. What do you mean? I'm well, not going to lie to you and tell you I'm a murderer. <laughs> I have a feeling at some point you're going to change your mind and you're going to probably look back on this day today right now no, I will with not. some regrets because you're going to have an opportunity today to set the record straight on why you did what you did and there may no, be some there may be some reason in your mind that makes sense no I will not the no. detectives now seem to be jumping to different steps of the read technique such as skipping over minimizing the crime or offering an alternative theory for why the crime was committed stating that it's her opportunity to speak without presenting any reason why she should take the opportunity is ineffective. They shouldn't rant about how horrible the crime is, as this will just stop her from speaking. Rather, they should have started with rapport building, introduced themselves, and treated her like a normal human being. Then they could have started asking her about her night, what she'd been up to, and see what her story was before they started finding mm. the holes. Though it can feel uncomfortable to try to establish this chat GPT nigga need to be a goddamn a horrendous act. He need to he need to apply for this job. The interrogation process. It's as though these detectives were too uncomfortable, so they skipped that part. Um, I am Samantha Gonzalez. Your, you have got the your wrong actions person. today are going to have a have a very very big oh impact God, on the rest man. of your life. You guys keep interrogating me. Isabella has a very flat affect when she speaks which is common with individuals with schizophrenia. Even with her displays of anger earlier, she doesn't really show much on her face, which is another feature of individuals with schizophrenia. Do you understand what I'm saying? You, are, what the hell is going on? Can you please just... Do you understand what I'm saying, say Isabella? Do you understand what I'm saying? You're, Don't you're, call you're, me Isabella! Do you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm not Isabella! Yo. Your decisions today are going to have a big impact on the rest of your life. You're 18 years old. you got a I'm long 15. ways to go. Fingerprint me. No, you're not in charge. You're arresting we, we, me because we, I look like somebody. That's wrong. It is you. It's not me. It's strange that they don't Dude, take Isabella up on her offer fuck? to be fingerprinted. Bruce, I'll be your getaway driver for when you escape prison. To show her that there won't be a moment where I need to involved. escape prison ever. I'm the not a thug. Seems to not All want right? to give Isabella the power to demand something, and he's trying to make her feel powerless by denying her suggestion. He also seems to be making the interrogation personal, which is one of the worst things an investigator can do, as he's not even using interrogation techniques anymore. In this bid for power and control, he's missed an opportunity to gather the evidence to confront her. Damn. However, there's also the possibility that this is a procedural issue, <laughs> as it's usually mandated right. <laughs> by state law that fingerprints, and in some cases DNA, be taken from suspects. Perhaps the police figure they'll have them soon enough and didn't want to bother getting her fingerprints earlier. You're acting like you're running this investigation. What do you mean? You're demanding to be fingerprinted. You're demanding to be weighed. Don't I have you're a right? Telling us that you oh, you're not this person that we've made. Why, a, why does she know her right? Don't I have person. a right to prove that I am innocent? Yes, right? So please come. Do you understand the law? Somebody, please, to fingerprint me. Do you understand the law? Uh, kind of. I've never been arrested or anything before. Where'd you go to high school? 
This place called um, Montgomery High School, Ohio. Montgomery? Yeah. Hmm. Notice that Isabella's foot started moving suddenly, though she's hmm. been mostly still throughout. This is a sign of her anxiety around this topic of questioning. Hmm. Individuals with delusions can become anxious when confronted about something not covered by their delusion. It's like if the typical person went out drinking and woke up with a gap in their memory. When asked about the fuzzy spot, they would be confused and easily suggestible, which would lead to anxiety. Mm. The brain makes up answers if it doesn't remember. Everyone's brain does this. As humans, we are uncomfortable with blank spots and uncertainty. So our brain will fill the gap with something to make us feel better. This may be what we're seeing. I don't know. Here. I've never been that drunk. Okay, I've never been fuzzy brain drunk. You went to Overland. Or, like, got no, drunk, no, had a hangover, no, and didn't, no, didn't no, remember no, what no. I did. Probably because I don't go out, go out and party and shit. Yeah, I, I swear to God. She I haven't. You. I've no, never no, had one of those moments. Well, she is, Yo, where's uh, Raz? Thank you for the six months. I swear. Is this your way of, uh, of dealing with this? You, you pretend you're <laughs> somebody you're not? I mean, is that your... Mechanism. I swear to God. It's really frustrating. I'm not even really scared or anything at all because I know that I'm not this person. So you're not scared at all? Because I'm not her. Are you on any drugs? Uh, no. Any prescription medication? No. Right. You ever been to a doctor for anything? I've been sick before, like every Physical. other person. Yeah. What kind of things have you had? What kind of sicknesses? Regular colds. Nothing serious. You ever been to a psychiatrist? No. You ever been diagnosed with any mental problems? No. The detectives ask Isabella various questions to ensure that she has all of her faculties. Do you know what month it is? This is, uh, is August, right? August? Do you know what day it is? No, I haven't had my phone in a while. What day is it? Damn. Today? So you do have a phone. Oh, shit. I did back in my house. Well, no, 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 you just said I... I left it behind. Do you drink? No. Did you drink anything last night? No. Stick any pills last night? No. Smoke any weed last night? No. So you would have been a clear head last night? Not under the influence of anything? I didn't kill anybody. That's not what I asked you. Hmm. I'm perfectly normal, girl. Perfectly normal? Yeah. <laughs> Who are your friends? I don't really have any friends. All I have is my boyfriend. Yo, who is this boyfriend she keeps talking you don't about? Have any friends. Okay. People that usually sit in that chair are accused of murder don't have any friends. Damn. These statements are not only personal attacks, but you live also in Canada? antagonistic. Those who kill other people often Canada. come in many varieties. Fuck There's no syrup. set rule. Most people say you're mean and they don't like you. I'm, they, I guess she's a mean person. Then. No, I'm you're not. the mean person. <laughs> I'm not a mean person. Well, you're not insane. Talking to third person. You're a mean person. I'm not a mean person. And you're a liar. Isabella's foot only seems to move when she's uncomfortable. Here mm -hmm. it appears to be because she doesn't like being called a mean person and because they're attacking her. Understandably, most people value being well-regarded, liked, and not being seen as mean. Okay. So it makes perfect sense that this would increase her anxiety. I'm not mean. What's most interesting Pretty here, nice though, guy. is that despite the fact that she should be really uncomfortable and leaning away from the detectives, she's not. She's leaning forward towards them. No, I am not. And you're a terrible liar. <laughs> no, I am this not. This makes no sense at all. Look at all you no, fucking no. losers. <laughs> 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 a killer who the jury will convict in 10 minutes of first degree murder for killing their mother. Then keep it I'm up. I'm literally so up. nice. The detectives want to know why Isabella would brutally kill her own mother. Holy shit. But the answer is unlike anything they've heard before. <laughs> Don't we There's all pillow talk? The story that meets the eye. <laughs> you niggas pillow talk to gay best friends. Is only just beginning. Sometimes people get we mad. Human. Sometimes people I didn't used scared. to bully you, Thor Maybe Gomez. Maybe she had the knife. Stop. Only now do they decide to try to minimize the crime. But after they talked about her being a cold-blooded killer. Thor Gomez. I'm not this girl. I don't know what happened with her and her life and who she is or what school she went to. That's not my problem. My problem right now is finding my boyfriend. It's a funny game you're playing, Yo. but nobody's laughing. Do you think you think some juror sitting on a jury's just creeping me it? out? No, you're not the person we suspect killed their mother. I'm when you're caught right down the street yeah. with knife injuries to your hand, scissors. It's not scissor injuries. I told you there were scissors. It's not scissor injuries. Yes, it was. You're not gonna bully oh, me into admitting what you want me to like. 
pretend no, to be I, I suspect we're but probably not. Me that. Me that's a decision you have to make in no your own fucking head. monkey, bitch. I mean, that's the bottom line. You're 18 years of age. You understand why you're here. You know what you've done. We've given you an opportunity to talk about what you've done. We've given you an opportunity to give us a reason why you did what you did. And you've continued on this crazy-ass story that, that this you have nothing to do with this, and that story is not believable. We don't it doesn't believe have you. to be believable. It will be proven. Mm. If the police oh. don't believe you... He's driving them a happens. hard bargain right now. You go to court? Yeah, you go to jail, for one. Oh. You go to court. And someday you're going to go to court. Yep. And, and if this is your way of trying to, to, to get through it, then... Um, so be it, but uh, just so you know, I mean, we're not going to, no, obviously, we don't believe you. We don't believe anything you've told us here today. Um, and and my, chance, my guess is that you're probably going to continue down the same road, acting like you don't know what we're talking about and, and pretending that, that none of this applies to you and you're not that person. And um, I don't know what TV show you watched that uh, thought this would be a good idea to, to come up with a uh, plan for defending yourself against a murder charge but i can tell you it's, no. it's not gonna work so you're so tired i'm gonna sleep in a park all night and you're sleeping <laughs> out I'm running from the police all night sleeping. running from the police is tiring I didn't run actually you were sleeping in a jeep a jeep yeah the basement of the parking garage do you remember that i was not sleeping in how the jeep. hell is she getting in the jeep why are you lying about this where you were sleeping we, we, we somebody fuck? saw you how do you think we found you somebody saw you and called us it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, it does. Isabella was sitting in a blue Jeep Wrangler in a parking garage off of South Parker Road when someone noticed her. But what they found to be even more suspicious was the various items sitting outside of the vehicle, such as a backpack and clothes. The car was actually mm -hmm. being held a client of a vehicle service, where a company employee immediately notified police once they spotted the teenager. Your picture's all over the TV's news media. Okay, here's a picture of a girl that looks like me is all over the TV. No, She's your picture is on that. Like <laughs> what kind of a grand coincidence would it be that you just happen to look like this person? Grand coincidence? It's a shitty coincidence. Isabella, this is... Don't call me Isabella. This, this, is, this is really... It's frustrating. I'm sure you're frustrated, too. You'd feel better. We'd have a better understanding of why you did what you did. Maybe somewhere I didn't do down, any of this stuff, man. Maybe somewhere down the Can line, fingerprint me? God would find a way to forgive you. Can I don't you know if he would or not. My God is not going to forgive you, but... I know my God not going to forgive her. Who knows? Can you fingerprint me? Are you listening to me? Yeah, I am listening <laughs> you are. to you. You are? Okay. Did you stab your mom? Yo. Where was girl? Is, whatever her That's not what is. I asked. So he didn't murder. He keeps saying he didn't murder anybody. No. Did you stab your mom? No. <clears throat> This is the first instance where Isabella is asked if she stabbed her mom, oh, and her response is telling. It's also a response that will change later in the interrogation. We see Isabella engage in grooming behaviors, such as brushing her hair and face multiple times, and then we see her do an anchor point movement and shift her leg. <laughs> Yo, Lord Tucky Bun's gonna get mod on y'all last. Is now at a 90 degree <laughs> angle where it's become a barrier between hey, her I got and you, the Lord Tucky Bun's. She also rubs her mouth, creating a cluster of nonverbal behaviors which indicate that she has increasing anxiety. When directly asked if she stabbed her mom, that boy finna be the most demon mod in here. Something unrelated. You didn't take a knife. <laughs> Yo, you time, no. I got you with the mod too. So the knife that we found is not going to have your fingerprints. Hold on, wait, wait, wait. I'm not looking at the screen. What's going to be? Hold on, hold on. Oh, yeah. Yeah. She also rubs her mouth, creating a cluster of nonverbal behaviors, which indicate that she has increasing anxiety. When directly asked if she stabbed her mom, she delays answering before saying something unrelated. You didn't take a knife and stab your mom last No. Time. So the knife that we found is not going to have your fingerprints and your DNA on it? No, it will not. She may look like me, but there's no No, no, no. I, I think it's probably going to. Uh, you can think whatever you like, but the tests don't lie. Once again, they're using words like I think and probably. They don't even sound sure or confident when trying to refute her lies. Hey, you're exactly right. The test is not lie. So I'm waiting for you to test it. The parking garage that you were... You were in, you were caught, you were arrested, where they pointed guns at you? The knife's in there. Okay. How do you explain that? 
I walked through a parking garage that a knife was in. Isabella, do you understand? Stop DNA? calling me Isabella, God do you damn it! Understand DNA evidence. Yeah, you read the papers, I know what you watch it is. the news, you know what it is. Yeah, I'm waiting for you to do it right now so I can go. Explain to me what your interpretation of DNA evidence is. What do you think it means? <clears throat> Doesn't everyone have like different DNA? Okay. Specific to each individual. So what do you think is going to happen when we take a sample of your DNA and we compare it to the knife that we found? Your DNA, gonna go, your, DNA your DNA is going to be on it. Your DNA will not match. Your DNA is going to be on That's going to prove that you have Your DNA that will not match. Hmm. And those Stick it to this head. shit. The fuck? I told you how all of this happened to okay. me. So you obviously bled. Uh, we're going to analyze. We're going to analyze the blood that you left. Do you understand? We're going to be able to type that blood back to you. No, not your house in Ohio. The bathroom. Okay. Yo, why she keep talking about up? Ohio when they in Colorado? After the discussion of the DNA, she starts swaying in the chair for the first time, which is another red flag. She does have concerns about the DNA now that she's heard all of this information, which is an interesting reaction given how she will behave later on. Did you see the police dog in there? Is that why you ran out of there? I don't work for time. ICE, yeah. W2G yeah. Drew. Come on, man. Really? Fuck ICE. Parking garage when you came running out. Uh, Do you remember running out of the parking garage? I and running remember. two police officers. Do you remember that part? I didn't run. I walked out of a parking garage and was ambushed. That wasn't you either. And what? That wasn't you either. <clears throat> so I am not this Isabella girl. <clears throat> All this crazy fucking shit keeps happening, and I am not this girl. Crazy fucking shit. That's a good way to put it. <laughs> How would you feel if this was done to you? I'd be scared. If I were you. I'm not really scared. I'm just. A little freaked out. So you're not scared this by this? No, because the DNA will not match. Do you have no remorse for what you did? I did not do anything wrong. So you don't, do you? I am not. You can, just sit, you can just sit there and continue to deny this with a clear conscience? I am not, Isabella. Really? You can just sit here and, and completely deny all of this? I'm not denying anything. Oh, shit. I'm truthful. That's you. No, it there's is no, not. There's no question. That's you. <clears throat> She's pretty. Yeah, you're a pretty girl. That's you. That's not me. Yeah, it is up your Facebook account. She's a singer? It's not even a funny game anymore. Why would she kill anybody? That's what we want to know. That is the question. Why would Isabella kill her mom? Isabella may not be able to answer their question just yet. Wow. But little do they know that there are multiple layers to the sick and twisted e. story. And the more they uncover, <laughs> the harder it is to Okay, Bruce, drop them nuts. So Ice doesn't use case. my nose like a bloodhound. Like, can you stop, and, and bro? What like, do you think? What, like, what are you saying? To become so enraged with their, with their mother that they would kill <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't know how people think. I stay away from people. Hey, Brandon. Well, just tell me what you think. Tucky, man. What's, what's your thoughts on it? Yo, Chris, thank you for get this up. situation? No, no. Specifically, you, what, bro, thank you. what would it take for, for somebody to kill their mother? Why? What would make them so angry that they would do that? Isabella engages in some grooming behavior here, which generally occurs when people want Reed's to be weak. liked or viewed as likable by others. It's approval-seeking behavior. This is followed by her incorrectly rephrasing a question. It's clear that this question has increased her anxiety because not only has she repeated their question, giving her time to think about her answer, but she had to know they would correct her, giving her even more time to think. I really have no idea. I would never kill my own mother. She may be a horrible person, but I don't have the potential in me to kill anyone. Oh. Why is your mother a horrible person? She hates me because I'm a legitimate child. Mm. So she hates you? Yeah, I kind of ruined your marriage, basically, and they blame me for it. So you got anger issues? I don't have anger issues. I just left. You hate your mom. That's kind I don't of an anger issue. Sure. She's scary. By playing into her lie and going along with her being another person, the detectives may be finally attempting to build some rapport with her. Just scary. So I ran away. Did your mom beat you? She doesn't beat. She hurts with weapons like scissors. Keep going. Keep going. What's that? Hello. Is What's that? Me when I get a new tat. I got yeah. that when I was a 
the kid that had stitches. No, that's not that's from stitches. It is from stitches. How did you get that? Lines. Police dog, wasn't it? Police dog? Mm -hmm. This fellow got bit by a police dog, has a scar on it right on him. This is really freaky. Wait, yeah, for real? Really what the freaky. fuck? So that's it? You yeah, should just it. leave now? We got the wrong would, person, we just let yeah. you go. Let you go? Yeah. Okay. Just like that. Yeah. See you later. <clears throat> Have a good day. Do you What's your boyfriend's Justin? name? Gabriel Adams. Gabriel Adams. You certainly know his <laughs> phone number, right? Call him right It's here. E dating. Fuck out of here. This is his phone number. He threw his phone away. I was Come on. To no, 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 no. You can't track him. Mm, you don't want to because he doesn't exist. He does exist. Okay. He's my soulmate. Oh, that's that's laughable. That's laughable. You have a soul. <laughs> There's no professional explanation right. for the comment. That's laughable that you have a soul. Even some of the other comments could be possibly pointed to as playing the bad cop, but this goes too far. He's clearly letting his personal feelings about this crime lead the interrogation. Someone should be pulling him out of the room. I do have a soul. All living creatures have no. a soul, even no, animals. No. People who do what you did, soulless. Solely, solely, solely. Before police are able to find out exactly what the reason behind the heinous act is, they delve a little deeper into the tumultuous life of their suspect. In doing so, the detectives sit down to interview Ryan, who not only provides valuable information about his stepdaughter, but he also recalls the horrifying timeline of events. I saw Isabella, she had a blank expression on her face. I'm not sure what happened with the knife she was carrying. It looked like she was still holding on to it. And I looked down and I saw my wife on the floor, blood everywhere, all over the bathroom. I was talking to the dispatcher and the dispatcher told me, make sure you get her breathing again, get her airways open. I don't know CPR. So, I, but at, at that time I looked at my wife's eyes and I knew that uh, she must not have made it. I just couldn't, couldn't believe that, that it had happened like that. Isabella was in a rage like I've never seen before. What do you mean? Well, she, I could just hear her just pummeling my wife. I thought she was just hitting her with her fists. Okay. So that thumping sound you were thumping hearing? Thumping sound, I thought, was you mean maybe hitting against the wall okay. and Isabella just pounding her Damn. with her fists. Okay. So that's what I originally thought it was, and that's when I called 911. Although it hasn't been confirmed, it's possible that Isabella also used the baseball bat as a weapon. Tell me about that. What's, what was the reasoning for that? She came down downstairs where I was sleeping, and she said, I feel very uncomfortable with Isabella in the house. She said that Isabella had threatened her or cursed at her, maybe cursed at her, and spit in her face okay. when she was laying down up there and rambled off some terrible things to her. Okay. Did she tell you what those terrible things were? Um, no, Spit, no, she didn't. Spitting on your mama? I know she, today, this morning, she showed me an email that wow. Isabella had written that was written to her or written to a Cecilia. Oh, yeah, so split personality email, disorder. came to my wife. It came to my wife. And I can't remember what the email said. It's on her phone. Okay. But it was very disturbing from Isabella, something very weird. The email sent by Isabella to her mother on the same day of the killing was chilling beyond words. It read, you will pay. However, it wasn't made out to Yoon Mi, but rather a woman named Cecilia. Yoon Mi was so concerned about her daughter's behavior that she called 911 just hours before her demise. Wow. Four officers arrived at the house, in addition to Isabella's biological father, Robert Guzman. Isabella was confronted while sitting on a swing in their backyard, but that had little effect on the teenager. She apparently spewed a string of insults to Yoon Mi, though it's unclear as to what was said. The officers warned the teenager that she should not treat her mother in such a volatile manner, stating that Yoon Mi was within her rights to obtain a court order and evict Isabella from the house, if she felt it was necessary to do so. Isabella responded with nothing but silence. They've had a bad relationship. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. Yeah, they've had a bad relationship for years. She, Damn, our she pure mom, but I've never seen a much. mom with ass handwriting. Ryan states that at the age of six or seven, 
Yoon Mi sent Isabella to live with Robert due to her disobedient behavior. The pair had divorced when Isabella was just three years old, oh, and Ryan and Yoon Mi began a relationship one year after. Yoon Mi's hope had been that her daughter would learn to respect others while living with her father. But it seems things didn't change. In fact, Isabella was supposedly continuing to act out and apparently had a difficult relationship with Robert and his new wife. And then she moves back in with you guys? She moves back in with us at 14. 14. Has Isabella ever been, um, is she on medications? Right. Has she ever been She's not on medication. doctor's care or anything like that? For she, went to a, she went to a psychiatrist for <sighs> maybe a month. And the psychiatrist said, um, no, she's fine. She's just a typical girl. How long ago was that? That's been um, maybe two, three years ago, something like that. Should have kept her ass out. So today, after the police come out and speak with her, what was her attitude or her demeanor after that contact with the, with the officers? She seemed uh, okay. She was friendly. Mm -hmm. um, her dad gave her a big hug. But I don't think she was very happy that her mom called the police. Following the dispute, Yoon Mi headed back to work. We were in the house again. Any together? No, no problems. No problems. No any conversation? Any? Not much of a conversation at all. We didn't. Did she really give you any much. indications that she might be plotting to do something like this? Oh no! I knew she was mad at her mom, mm -hmm. and I knew she was very, very upset at her mom. But I had, I had no idea. She would ever do anything like this. Though Ryan didn't suspect it, she was indeed plotting something terribly heinous. When was the last time you cried? Last time you cried. <laughs> yeah. Yo, this nigga is you? funny, bro, for some reason. Like, yeah, you're a normal person's memory. He just keeps making me laugh. I don't think you're a normal person. It took me like a week to get here. Did you hear me? <laughs> I don't think you're a normal person. I asked you when you last time you cried. I told you I cried when I ran away. You didn't run away from anywhere. You ran away from a crime scene is what you did. No, I did not. So you cried when you ran away last night? I did not Holy do any shit. of these things. I am not Isabella. Maybe oh, really? Bring, uh, Why don't Robert you just bring the here. DNA test? Let's bring Robert down here. Who's Robert? You know who Robert is. Oh, stepdaddy. No, I don't. Robert could stand right there in that doorway and identify you. You're his own flesh and blood. According to Ryan, Isabella and Robert were always close even through thick and thin, but she can't seem to remember that. Mm. How about if we have Ryan come down? Who's that? Your stepdad. Have him That's come her stepdad. Oh, we could have Ryan, Ryan come in. Yeah. I mean, he's the one that last saw you before you took off running from the police last night. Um, this he's, is all her life, and he, he keeps he's saying the one it's mine. That, he's the one that identified you. What do you think about that? We'll have him come down. Maybe you can apologize. I'm not going to apologize better. to a stranger. What do you mean? So I didn't kill come anybody. In and lie about, he would come in and stand at the doorway and lie about committing somebody who committed him. Well, obviously somebody died or this wouldn't be happening, but I didn't kill anybody. Why would he lie about it? I don't even know what you're trying to, I don't even understand what you're trying to say right now. Isabella's flat affect is similar to another case we've covered, Morgan Geyser, also known as the Slender Man Stabbing. Hell? Do you know where you are right now? Uh, not really. Where do you think you are? At a police station. Morgan was diagnosed with schizophrenia, and again, this kind of flat, emotionless speaking is typical with this diagnosis. Kathy, maybe? Who's that? Come on, I'm Isabella. Yo, yo G Ma. You guys are like, what? Didn't you say that this girl has no friends? Well, there's people that know right, you, Detective sat down with Isabella's friend, Catherine Argeta, also known as Kathy, who gave a bit of insight on who Isabella was outside of her family home. Yeah. Kathy. Apparently, Kathy met Isabella at Overland High School, in addition to Isabella's ex-boyfriend, Ilya Abramov, who goes by Tony. The trio, along with Kathy's boyfriend, would apparently use recreational marijuana from time to time. Kathy explained that Isabella had developed a spiritual side to herself within the last year and had become increasingly quiet. Holy shit. Yet at the same time, got there was a noticeable kindness that she had not previously shown, though Kathy didn't elaborate further. It appeared that things may have been looking up for her, 
or perhaps there was a more sinister intention behind this newfound enlightenment. Kathy goes on to say that she received a chilling text message from Isabella on Monday, August 26th, only two days prior to the killing. She angrily insulted Kathy using a derogatory term and ended the text with a shocking last few words. I know what you did. Whoa. Kathy messaged back asking what she was talking about, but Isabella didn't respond. However, on August 28th at 7.15 p.m., her phone buzzed once again. Isabella had sent another text, this time saying, The astro beam has awakened. Utterly confused, Kathy responded, asking for an explanation, but to no avail. Only a short the time astro later beam? would Isabella commit the unthinkable. These are your bags, right? Yeah. You know the stores that we wrap up your wrists? H Mart? Actually, these people were real nice to me and gave me these things. But well, you bought something, right? They paid for it for me. Who? This Asian lady took pity on me. Came all dirty. She That's asked weird. me if I was okay, and I cried, and I told her I was trying to call my boyfriend. I could use the phone. She said, You don't have any stuff. Well, I'll give you some tampons and things. The clothes are mine. But she gave me the underwear and the pads and stuff. Because I didn't have money for it. So we go there to look at the videos. That shit you sold her was late. I didn't sell her anything. I don't sell oh, anything. Yeah. At the H Mart. They have, they have surveillance cameras on it. Yeah, like the H Mart. If you want to go look and see if I was in H Mart, you'll see that I was. After fleeing from the scene, oh. Isabella made her way to the H Mart grocery <laughs> store, where she quickly caught attention due to her disheveled state and bloody clothing. A nice lady took pity on her, and in addition to buying her a few items, what am I doing? Good and fuck, what am I fuck? You see, good and fuck. Isabella needed I'm hungry as hell. What did you tell her? What did you tell her? Because we're gonna call her and talk to her. What story did you tell her? What did you tell her? Yo, stop spamming like that, Lord Chunky Buns. We have interpreters. You look like an NPC bot. What did you tell her? That's the truth. What did you say? Exactly the same. That's how bots spam. Where'd you meet her at? Where the receipt says. To what? Where the receipt says. Where's that? It's right by the garage. Okay, y'all are just not jumping, Lord Chunky Buns, under my watch. <laughs> so you you met her inside or outside? Inside. So you leave Ohio with all of this stuff, all your world possessions. <coughs> this is this is what you travel across the country. I told you, Gabriel said he'll take care of me. I didn't need to bring much. But you can't get hold of Gabriel if you're doing your phone. No. Well, how does that make any sense? He had to dump it. Your story doesn't make any sense. This is not true. A two-year-old wouldn't believe your story. Two-year-old, you A two-year-old come up with a better story. Next, the detectives ask for her permission to conduct a DNA test. They're not surprised, oh, so she did. immediately agrees. Finally. it has been her most frequent request. But what she doesn't understand is just how long it actually takes to obtain the results. <laughs> Please bring the DNA test now so I can leave. You're not leaving, just to understand that. The DNA will not match. Well, that... You can if the DNA does not match, I will be free, right? You can continue think that, but you are not leaving. Just so okay, you know. theoretically, if the DNA doesn't match, you have to let me go, right? No. That doesn't make any sense. Yes. No, you've been identified as a killer. I have not been identified. If the DNA does not match, then I will be set free. Well, that's not going to be the case. We won't know that for months. For You're months. under arrest for first-degree murder. You have no bond. You ain't going nowhere but jail. Damn. Black's my boy. Thank you for the five months. No, I am not. You cannot do this to me. This is No, wrong. I'm not tugging you it under the blanket. I am who she is before you can take me anywhere. No, we don't. We don't Isabella, we don't. we're trying to give you Stop an opportunity. Stop calling me Isabella. We're just trying to give you an opportunity to tell us what happened. Stop calling me Isabella. So you, you don't understand. You don't understand. My name is Samantha. Impact, do you? Hmm. You don't understand the full impact. Yes, you're going to jail. No, you are not getting out of jail. There is no bond with first degree murder. Do you understand <laughs> that? I didn't murder anybody. Then we'll easily prove a case against you. You can't prove anything because I didn't do it. <laughs> yeah, we will. Well, 
That's your opinion. Yo, what does Who's gooning going? mean? No conscience. None. Why did Lord Chunky you know, Buns just say I'm gooning you know, right now? I I'm just a random girl on the street oh. that you ambushed. No, you're one of the most evil person I've ever sat across the table from. I'm not evil. Yeah, That's you are. the fuck no. you are. Very. The detectives continue to remind Isabella of the consequences and telling her how terrible she is and stating that she's the most evil he's ever sat across from, all of which hasn't got them very far. At this point, Isabella has been in the room with them for an hour. If she was in her right mind, most people would have asked for a lawyer by now. <laughs> the conduct of both officers is unprofessional, suggesting a lack of training and an inability to conduct custodial interrogations properly. No, oh, she's dumb Somehow, as shit. Somehow, despite their approach, they're just barely able to stay away from crossing the line into coercion. Though there's enough nuance here to argue that point from both sides. More importantly, they have completely abandoned the read technique and its core tenet of getting a confession through the use of empathy. The point of an interrogation is to be a listener and to create an open environment where the suspect can make disclosures. Even look at the table. It's cluttered and disorganized creating an environment non-conducive to the sharing of information. Their methods of countering her denials are also interesting. It's generally sarcastic and closed off, not inviting Isabella to say more or to keep talking even in the face of having her denial dismissed. Everything about their actions appears intended to harass the suspect, rather than doing their best to support the dialogue necessary for a confession. Uh oh, you just scared the hell out of me. No if it get real. I scare the hell out of you. Yeah, you have no conscience. You can do anything to anybody and can not even do feel. It? How do you do it? this thing? Isabella states that she would like a DNA test as soon as possible, and the detective performs a cheek swab. Say, for instance, somehow um, we've got this all jacked up, and you are who you say you are, and we, we've brought the wrong person in here. How would we go about? trying to prove that you are who you are. Who who could we call? Who could we get in contact There's with? no way I'm totally... Why would I call somebody who stabbed me with scissors? Well, I'm asking you That's a question. That's all I got. Okay, can Gabriel I ask... Gabriel was waiting for me. Can I ask you a question and just have, not have you interrupt? Because if we're making a mistake, we want to we wanna do the right thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Why don't we start with... Um, who's your father? What's your father's mm -hmm. name? I don't really know. Honestly, my mom's kind of a crazy bitch and whores around a lot. Okay. She hates me because I'm an illegitimate child. Okay, so... All I know is that my dad's Mexican. That's why my last name is Gonzalez. Really, dude? All I know is, is an example of a selective memory statement. It can't exactly be refuted, but it doesn't really <laughs> answer the question. This is a big non-verbal <laughs> indicator that she's feeling baby anxious Joker. about going deeper into this Baby Joker, what you laughing at, baby Joker? Look at how is increased. <laughs> this is a subconscious stress response. However, we can't confirm that this is because she's <laughs> Yo, being bleak, sick, good riddance, nigga. As it could just as easily be because she's being verbally attacked by two police officers. All I know is I'm Mexican hour. because my last name is Gonzalez. Is his last name's Gonzalez. Do you know his first name? She wouldn't tell me. So you don't know his first name? No. Have you met your father? No. So you never met your father? I ran away. Gabriel was on like that. Okay. Slow down. I want to get to the bottom of this. So... Gonzalez is all you know. You don't know first name. She calls Gonzalez to prove he to from? me that I'm not clear enough to be her daughter or something. Where's your father from? I just know he's Mexican. But where's he from? from Mexico. He's from Mexico? So he's from Mexico, the country of Mexico? Oh, well, I guess, obviously. Isabella is Holy. showing other signs that her anxiety has increased as well, such as kicking her foot and avoiding the question. Again, we can't say she's being deceptive, but her anxiety level has increased with this topic. She's either seriously, legitimately 100% delusional, or an extremely skilled liar. It's possible that this is something that has been said to her before, and that's why she's able to quickly push out a response. Isabella states that her mother's name is Sabrina Hicks, who lives at 2657 South Jamaica Circle in Cincinnati, Ohio. However, this address doesn't exist in the state. Although 26 South Jamaica Court is located in Aurora, Colorado, right across the street from Isabella's home. But this would only be just one of her many bizarre statements to come. Wow. What's Sabrina's birthday? I don't know. You don't know your mom's birthday? 
Um, I think that in this world, there's got to be two kinds of different moms, right? I heard about that horrible woman, Casey Anthony. Okay. There's hold, two hold, different hold kinds up. of mothers. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Okay, I don't have time there's for all this. There's a mother this. who Do you know your mother's birthday or don't you? I don't. Do not know. She doesn't love me. She, I don't really know anything Do about her. Do not know her birthday. That's no. a question. Don't. Okay. No. So your, your father is Gonzalez. You don't know his first name. Your she mother is Sabrina Hicks, but you don't know her birthday, and you claim they both live at this 2657 South Jamaica Circle, Cincinnati, Ohio. You don't know the zip code. How about a phone number? I disconnected the house phone like a while ago because they're fucking cheap. Cell phones? I don't have their cell phone numbers. We don't talk to each uh, other. That's why I ran away. It's like... Okay, where does Sabrina... Not, like, not really my family. But where does like Sabrina Hicks names. work? Maybe we can go to her work. Um, she works at a grocery market. Do you know the name? We don't talk to each other. We're like strangers. Yeah. She just hates me. She looks at me like with disgust. Like, oh, you illegitimate right, child. Right, right. You poor illegitimate <laughs> child, you. The detectives ask. Oh, uh, you Gonzalez. Ah. She supposedly doesn't know. That's crazy, bro. Next, they question her about Montgomery High School, where she claims to have attended. Although this Exclamation would point out to be yet another lie. In actuality, Isabella went to Overland High School in Aurora, Colorado. I might actually have to hook a Brio up just out. to put it under my so whenever a nigga come in here su uh, sucking school. just Why? switch cams. Where, what street That's is a good ass school? idea. I don't know. Well, you went to school there. It's not that you? far from my house. I just <laughs> walk. I know how to walk. I don't drive. I what don't know what street is it on? Because what we can do is we can go to your school. You can have officers from Cincinnati go to your school and see if we can. Unlimited nuts well, if I do that. Why because we're trying to disprove. We're trying to disprove that you're not this person. That's great. Do the DNA test and it'll prove everything. Well, I'm going to have to prove it by more than one way. Mm. Well, and the easiest way for me to prove it is if you can put me in touch with somebody back there in Cincinnati, Ohio. I will not can, put you in touch with the people that are We can send them a picture from. of you and Look they, what they she say. Did to me. I will not put you in touch with them. If they can if they say, yes, that's here, my daughter, have to run away. then you're out the door. If they find out I am here, I'm going to have to leave here again. I'm not trying to take another bus. Hoping to catch her in another lie. If they don't bang her fucking head against this table and start playing Montgomery bad cop, I'm going to get irate. Incidentally, she claims to have skipped picture day. Okay, so the high school yearbook's not going to work for this year. Did you get your picture taken when you were in eighth grade, the year before? Pine Lane Middle School. I'm sorry? The name is Pine Lane Middle School. Pine Lane. Hmm. Okay. Funny, I've heard of that one. There's yeah. a pine lane here in Colorado. Did you know that? Okay, there are lots of names. No, no, that's pine Boy, lane middle school. Boy, thank you for the school. sub, bro. I appreciate you. What do you think of that? Pine lane middle school. Same one you claim you go to. I don't go there anymore. In Cincinnati, Ohio. There's one right here in Colorado. Man, so what? Aren't there like a million? People are not creative with names. Is your picture in their yearbook? Yeah, probably somewhere. If you could find it. I don't know if you guys have that kind of technology. Oh, we can find it. If it exists, we can find it. The Cincinnati police say those, those both, all three of the addresses you gave us, none of them are any, don't exist. Uh, maybe they don't know every single address in all of Cincinnati. It's the freaking police the department. If they don't know, who do, who knows? Now, what do you want you me to do? Where I'm not go? Isabella. We just want you to tell the Do you truth. understand how complicated you've made this? I am not Isabella. <laughs> I know you guys know that. Yo, Wolvie, thank you for those, uh, get this up again, bro. Confidence in what she's saying, but she brings her leg back up in a barrier position. Okay, if you're not Samantha, then who hey, are you? Hey, Chitlins for Thanksgiving. Ch that. Chitlins for D.O. giving. That's all that matters. Pull up, I'm pull up. Free balls. The problem is, is each lie you tell. It's not a lie. You got to tell another lie, and then you forget the lies you've already told. This <laughs> becomes so confusing I mean, and so overwhelming what? that you don't know what you said. <laughs> the detective may be referring to the liar's loop here, but he doesn't really mention having to deconflict stories or anything. Just the difficulty. Yo, what y'all family cooking for Thanksgiving, straight. bro? Although the detectives are aware that Isabella is being deceitful, they are unaware of the disturbing and shocking reason as to why the heinous crime was committed. Okay. Time would eventually tell all, again. but authorities could have never predicted such an unbelievable ending to the perplexing case. Have any friends this you address know? you gave is bogus. It's the Cincinnati bogus. police say it's a not a good address. It's a good address no, I don't know what to tell you. How do you explain that? 
Are you confused know. about the numbers? Are you confused about the name of the street? Pretty fucking sure that's my address. Yeah, I've read them. I seem to write it down somewhere. Yeah, that's a perfectly valid address here in the city of Aurora, which is where we're at today. It's, it's a, so obvious that I'm not her. Really? Yeah. So she has the same scar you do. Okay. So Merely another same. coincidence. It's not the same. It's a little different. Merely a coincidence. A well, we thank you for yeah, another get you sub, you bro. I appreciate it. Your mother brutally stabbed her mother 151 times. Damn. 151 times? In the course of that. 151 times. In the course of that, her hands got totally cut. Totally just like you. Another coincidence, you say? Holy shit. Holy fucking shit. You're found in a parking garage with a with a knife that appears to be the murder weapon. You didn't find you me with a knife. Don't another lie. coincidence? You did not find me with a knife. Is that a coincidence knife. again? Again, it appears that the detective is focused Why they on the control like, like and having daughter and father. In the interrogation room, rather than trying to work through the steps to get her to tell the truth. He's using language where he doesn't even sound sure of himself. For example, saying appears to be... You did not find me with a Were knife. You found you the parking garage where the knife was? Okay, the knife was somewhere yes, in there? Yes, 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 detective, man, that's true. Wrong. Yes, detective, that's true. Right, took the wrong okay. fucking shortcut, man. After an autopsy was performed, it was discovered that Yoon Mi had actually endured 31 stab wounds to the face and 48 stab wounds to the neck, a staggering 79 in total. I hope you catch her, but I'm not her, and when you take that DNA sample out this room, it will prove that I am not her. Holy shit. That's all the evidence you need. If the DNA doesn't match, we don't even you can't need your DNA me. to prove anything. Well, we thank you for yeah, another get this up, bro. I watch forensic files. You can't lie to me about That's everything. TV show. Jumbo, thank you for the host. So, what do you That's mean? That's a TV show. The boys just call her an idiot. Do you believe everything they put on TV is real? How was, stupid are you? I thought I was Honest real. to God. <laughs> How stupid are you? To be real. You're, gonna, you're gonna go off some TV show. You're gonna you're gonna put your life in the hands of some goofy ass TV show. DNA is that, everything. Answer my question. Are you gonna put your life in the hands of some TV show? No, I'm. Is that what you're gonna bargain your life on? I'm Forensic Files says you gotta have a DNA <laughs> match. Yeah. Really? Yo. Wait. Really, Isabella? Does that make any goddamn sense to you? <laughs> Stop calling me Isabella. I'm That's your name. Hey, I'm hell no. Nah. <laughs> no, it isn't. Yo, Throwing dude. The pen is completely inappropriate, no matter how frustrated he may be. With how the detective is yelling, cussing, and berating her, there's a chance Isabella could have a case for how verbally abusive the interrogation is. We have been so patient with you, giving you every opportunity. Oh my God! Please do. Oh, are you things. getting upset? No, the fuck she did it. Are you getting upset? You would, if this happened to you. You make me upset. Uh, I haven't done anything to you. You've you lied, continually, over and over and over today. You've wasted our time. You're wasting my time. I didn't. No, no, no. Anything. Your time means nothing. From this point forward, your right. time is counted in minutes, hours, and days that you're going to be spent, or will be spent behind bars, looking out into Yo, a prison cell. Get this, uh, the bro, detectives are it. at their wits' end with Isabella, who appears to be in no hurry to confess the truth, perhaps because they've done such a horrible job with this interrogation. And as we continue with Ryan's interview, a terrifying revelation makes its way into the light proving that Isabella may have just been a ticking time bomb waiting to go off. But my wife was just on pins and needles because of all that had happened around Isabella the last couple of days. Okay. So has it seemed like things have gotten worse in the last few days between Isabella and her mom? With what you mean told me, yes. With what she told me, yes. And that's it has what worse. she told you was the, the statement she had made? The cursing at her and uh, spitting in her face. Okay. And uh, the email she wrote to my wife, that ended up in my wife's hands, said something about you will pay or you've been cursed. Okay. And your wife found that email today? Today at about, uh, I remember she showed it to me. Uh, it came in, I think, about 2.42, something like that, okay. before the officers showed up. And it was from Isabella? From Isabella. But she marked it to a Cecilia. It was kind of funny. She sent it to my wife, 
but she made it out to uh, Cecilia. Kind of funny. Ryan Fuck states loony. that neither he nor his wife knew anyone by the name of Cecilia, but Yoon Mi was absolutely horrified by the disturbing email. What's your what's your impression of of her as a? She is um, very hot tempered. Hot tempered. Okay. Very hot tempered person. It doesn't, uh, and she runs her mouth like crazy. F you, F this, F that. Um, she. Fuck it. Fuck it. Seems very depressed. I would okay. have to say. She seems horribly depressed okay. about her life and blames her mom for her misery. The only thing I can say is over the past couple of weeks, Isabella has been very angry with her mom. Just okay. a lot of anger, a lot of cussing, cursing, just a lot of anger. Has something prompted that as far the as difference you, between you know? cussing and cursing? Well, I mean, sometimes my wife was, she's pretty strong minded. And she would tell Isabella, no, you shut up, you get out. Or, okay. you know, it would go back and forth right. like that. So I'm sure Isabella took those things to heart. Ryan recalls the previous incident Magic. He had with Isabella that provides a glimpse into just how quickly her temper could flare. Around five years ago, Isabella went down to the basement of the home to retrieve a fan that belonged to Ryan. When he didn't let her take the item, she supposedly retaliated with violence and allegedly punched Ryan in the face. Interestingly, Isabella is presenting as the complete opposite in the interrogation to how she's described by Ryan. But Isabella's reign of terror would not end here, as there was something much more sinister that would inevitably unleash itself in the most sickening way possible. You committed a heinous... Okay, you're going to go to prison for that. No, you're not getting out of jail no, anytime soon. No, okay? And the fact that you can sit there with that stupid goddamn look on your face makes me sick. It makes you me physically sick to look do at the you. DNA test will prove me right. Don't tell me how to do my job. Why are you Don't tell me how to do my job. I haven't done anything to you. You've come in here and tried to fucking act like you're so goddamn smart. What do you mean? You're putting your life in your hands today, my friend. I'm putting Think my about life it. in my hands? That doesn't make any sense. Stabbing someone 151 times takes a long time. When the police come before, like, whoever did it would be done. Isabella, please. Hello, okay. Isabella. How long do you, does it do take? you think we're stupid? I'm not Isabella. Do you think we're stupid? I am not Isabella. Do you? Answer no. my question. I don't think Do him and I look stupid? I'm not insulting <laughs> you. Do we look stupid? No. Do you think we believe your story? Do you think we believe your story? Do you yeah, think we I believe it? Like it? No. No, we don't believe your story. What does that tell you? We'll get to the bottom of this. Yeah. You are a cold blooded killer and you're gonna go to prison. Dude, he Man, keeps saying the same shit, bro. Oh my goodness, nigga. You know that. Like I said, we don't even need DNA to prove We this know thing. this. Do you do? Yo, thank you for the gifted sub everything. again, Wooby. I appreciate you. This girl murdered somebody and we found another girl in a similar an location that looks similar to her. So we're going to blame her because we can't find her. And we look bad because we can't find the murderer of this woman. So we're going to blame it on an innocent person, a little girl who still has her whole life ahead of her. No, you don't, you're going to ruin you don't my have life. life in front of you. You're going to ruin my whole life because I have some random crazy bitch who looks like me. ended last night when you, no, walked I didn't. Out of that, when you walked into that bed. I did not Let kill anybody. While stating, I did not kill anybody, she awkwardly rubs her chin. And then her following hand motions don't match up with her words. This is a red flag that her anxiety is showing, and her brain is not matching up with her statements. Your life ended last <coughs> night when you decided you'll kill Water went down the wrong pipe. Because everything you do from now on is what the police and the government tell you. Bro. Yo, this Wolvie, thank you camera, for the get the right? sub, bro. Yeah, I appreciate it. Have some sort it's of, right there. This is not who framed Robert. All to get this okay? up. The DNA is not going to come back and match because we're not the same person. Nobody's trying to frame me or anything. You got the wrong girl. You made a genuine mistake. People make mistakes. It's okay. I'm not mad at you. Isabella is turning the tables, now minimizing what she claims to be his mistake. Perhaps Forensic Files prepares people better for interrogation than some police departments. It's interesting to note that the officer appears to have corporal stripes on his left sleeve, yet he looks to be of at least middle age or older. 
for someone of that age to not have risen above that rank can speak silent volumes. If I knew somebody killed their mother, I stabbed him 151 times, I'd be out to get him too. The detective is speechless. Holy fuck, dude. But no matter what Isabella says, there's no Yo, thank you for the get the sub 300. I appreciate it. The crime. However, the case is far from over. And a most shocking you ever had any of these skip, make schizo symptoms? Life, no. Flipping the investigation straight Have I been head. high as shit talking you know, to myself? You keep making yeah. Making <laughs> random accusations, but well, I'm not making DNA, random action, accusations about nothing. That's vibes, though. If the DNA doesn't match, you can't keep me here, and you it will not your match. To death. It will not match. Give me three D8 gummies, 150 death, MG. That's you. No, it isn't. Yes, it Green is. in the fuck no, out. No, it isn't. And I'm really fucking angry that you ruined my fucking shitty day and made it even worse. Well, welcome to the rest of your fucking life. <laughs> you guys are really mean. Yeah. Yo, hell no. Nah. Oh, Yo, 300, thank so you, cool Wolfie. Right. Thank you, bro. I appreciate it. And you know what, Well, too? welcome to the rest of your fucking life. Oh, really? Yeah. Thank you for the six months, the Vanilla. Detectives inform Isabella that they're going to have Yo, I love y'all, bro. Station to identify her. But she nobody responds, ain't tell you today. Stating that she wishes to see her boyfriend, Gabriel. However, they disregard her request. What are you worried about last night? Because well, I want to know where you spent the night. In a fucking park. In a park with a little red slide. I got all that. Someplace in Denver, which you know what street you're on? No. I don't even know the fucking streets in Ohio. This place is even more confusing. Ohio. Let's well, get all mad about it. I Why, thought I asked of course Bruce's I Rose voice says, I do not do love you. you. <laughs> That's a terrible thing to do. What is? Accusing the wrong person. Fuck. And putting a gun at him? I didn't point a gun at him. Are they, bro, me. they got to get her to confess before they can even, like, do anything. Did. Like five men just out of nowhere. Get down on the ground or we're going to shoot you. We're going to tase you. Do you realize how terrified I was? Have you ever had guns pointed at you before by the police? No. This is the fucking scariest day of my fucking life. Scariest day of your life. Okay. Having your mom hurt you is one thing. Having the police confront you with guns and saying they're gonna tase you and you're a fucking murderer you to this you to that you stabbed a bitch 151 times yeah that's fucking terrifying to think that i might or you would even consider sending the wrong person to jail isabella shows a bit of doubt here stating to think that i might for a moment here there's a glimpse into her wondering if her world is real whatever her brain has done to protect her from the trauma of the terrible thing that she has done she's doubting it now and almost lets it slip Oh, shit. However, she cuts the sentence off and holds on tighter to her delusions to avoid facing what she's done. We would never call Forever. anybody that got stabbed 151 times a bitch. Oh. You never said that. That was your. I word. was calling her a bitch, Isabella. Hmm. Are you confused? A little. You <laughs> said stabbed too. a bitch 151 times was your statement. I don't understand this. Shit. That was your statement. I'm so it? upset. I don't understand this. Shit. Maybe I'm just too upset and I'm fucking saying shit backwards. I don't know. This has been a really bad day. Isabella claims to have run away from her home in Ohio, wow. where she took a bus to Colorado. Not only that, but her supposed boyfriend Gabriel is apparently waiting for her at the French Quarter apartment complex as they speak. Once again, the detectives aren't entertained and instead bring Robert, Isabella's father, into the interrogation room. Who's that? That's my baby. Okay. Sir, do you recognize, do you recognize this? What? Oh. Come on back out here, please. Do you recognize her? Yeah. What's her, what's her name? Isabella. Isabella, what's her last name? Guzman. Isabella Guzman, okay. Uh, right. This photograph here, is that photograph? Is that your daughter there? Yeah. Okay. And this is your daughter here? GG's, bitch. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and we'll see back here and then we'll see about coming back later. Okay. Okay. Yes, I have an update with the search. They're getting ships to Mike right now. Like Want to see all the boxes? Crazy family. Is that why she's psychotic and killed her mom? My name is Samantha. Who's that man? It's impossible to know if Isabella is delusional or if she knows she's making stuff up and lying. However, if someone is faking, they will break the lie, especially an adolescent. They just can't keep it up that long. 
It may be hard to believe, but the chances are that she's really this delusional. So we're all hiding and that man's insane? Is that what you're saying? No, I don't know. He probably is insane. Why don't you do more research on this do fucking you, girl? Do you think that it was just a... Y'all ever put y'all leg up in a gaming chair after a long day and you smell your own back? Be for real. No weird shit. Guys only. Guys only question. Okay. He's your biological. It be like that for real. I'm not just about to whip with him. Samantha. Ooh. Like I told you, we were trying to do everything in our power to verify who you are. Okay. You know what? This whole thing with Samantha. Yo, y'all funny as hell. Why not girls? It seems like Toto says to me that a girl. True, true, true. Yo, girls, y'all ever just live. Completely mentally ill family. And he probably thinks that Never I'm mind. or something because we look I don't even want to know the answer. I know that shit smells crazy. Man, you're making my life hell. Really? Yes. Please. And that's your big concern right now. I need a French is, Quarter so I can see Gabriel. That's your big concern is how your life Hell. is. Yes. No. He any, is not my father. You don't have any concern for how his life is. No, who the fuck is he? His fucking problems are not my own. Bro, you she's not sweet. Have any concern for, um, that's your, my your baby. Father. God, do you know how creepy that is? You don't have any concern about that? Oh, she's that? freaking out now. I think that's really fucking terrible. Yeah. You should so never your kill your Your only concern mom. is about you. Through this, this whole thing. This is my life. Yeah. My life. Her life is not connected with mine. Why the fuck we, do we have to We've been trying to tell you all along that this is about your life. Because this is about your life. This is an opportunity for you to, to drink that make water sense more and more. Plus make sense of what happened last night. Isabella once again tries to reason with the detectives. But what she fails to understand is that she's only digging herself into a deeper hole. Okay. Yeah, you seem like a nice person who made a genuine mistake. I'm not mad at you. Please just do the no, DNA no, no, test. Listen to me. You have no business judging me. Okay? What do, do, you not, mean? do not judge me. Do not tell me I'm a nice person. He is not my dad. Do not tell me anything like that that makes me mad. Okay? <laughs> I'm, I'm, Yo. We're, we're doing everything we can to try to give you an opportunity. If you continue to just sit here and um, dick us around, I think you know we're 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 done being we're done being pleasant. Yeah, bitch, you're getting some years. Yeah, life is hard. Typically, when a detective mentions an opportunity, they then expand on this by showing what this opportunity is going to do for her. However, they don't do that with Isabella, essentially never giving her a good reason to confess. What we know is that's your father. That's not my father. That's not my father. Ah, this can't be happening to me. No, I'm not going to prison for the rest of my life after this. No, please. Take me back to Gabriel. I think you're going to feel a whole lot better if you just tell us Yo, what she's happened. trying to get that insanity this plea like fuck, bro. Like, it's insane. Display a more so insane. Attitude. If you get this off your chest, give you an opportunity to, to feel I better about what you did. Isabella, bitch. She's ruining my whole fucking life. Insane. Isabella, there's more people we could bring Stop in. Calling me Isabella. We could bring your boyfriend in. What boyfriend? We could bring your step stepfather what boyfriend? in. Oh, we know their names. We've talked to them. In reality, Isabella's supposed Holy boyfriend Gabriel fuck. would turn out to be a complete fabrication. However, Isabella did have a boyfriend, or an ex for that matter. Detective sat down with 22-year-old Ilya Abramov, also known as Tony. Oh, this shit finna get real, that boy Tony, hold on. Crime. But what authorities didn't expect was that the young man may have been concealing a secret of his own that also involved 18-year-old Isabella. Apparently, their relationship ended over a week before Yunmi's death, after three years together. But that wouldn't be the last of their encounters. Tony states that a couple days before August 28th, he returned to Isabella's house to drop off some of her belongings. However, when Isabella opened the door, she was furious and tried to attack him with a golf club, though it's unclear if Tony was injured. Apparently, the couple had parted ways because Isabella believed that Tony was cheating on her with their friend, Kathy. Though he asserts that this never happened, Isabella was enraged. Okay, so did you go to the house on the day that this happened? Wednesday. You weren't there at all that day? Mm -hmm. Somebody saw you there that day. Her stepdad said you came by the house, walked in the house, and went upstairs and had to get some stuff. Oh, yeah, I grabbed my stuff from the closet. I, I didn't see, see her, though. So you were there that day? But I didn't see you her. You didn't see her. Where was she at? I don't know. Okay. 
So when you go to the house that day, what time is it when you when you go there then? I think it was around five. So five in the afternoon? Yes. Tony says that he tried to call Isabella. When he didn't receive an answer, he walked in the house. He remembers seeing Ryan, but they didn't speak to each other. Tony made his way to Isabella's room, grabbed some of his clothes, and left the house, all without seeing his ex-girlfriend. But there may be more to the story than he's letting on. Why do you want to come into the police station and start lying to the detectives? Yelia, what's, what's your deal? You went to her house twice that day. You went in the morning, she chased you away with the golf club, and then you went back that afternoon. Tony has just confessed mm. to another lie where he had previously stated that his violent interaction with Isabella happened prior to the day of the killing. Now the detective is more suspicious than ever, but the topic of conversation suddenly shifts to Isabella and her home life, where Tony divulges some shocking information. Apparently, Isabella had at one point mentioned to Tony that you and me allegedly tried to poison her, along with their dogs. Wow. She apparently became very sick after eating something from the fridge, and claimed she'd smelled an odor of bleach emanating from the dog's water bowl. Although these accusations have never been confirmed, Tony confesses that he has never witnessed a physical altercation between Isabella and her family members, but rather verbal arguments between she and her mom. And last but most disturbing, Isabella supposedly disclosed another alleged incident where Yoon Mi apparently poked herself in the back of her head with scissors, reportedly stating that she wished for she and Isabella to die together. And what the, the detective fuck? detective is buying the claims and continues his efforts to untangle the web of lies, although poorly. Yo, yeah, yeah this shit is the, fucking my head really up, bad bro. part for you is you just turned 18 a few months ago, so you gotta go. Oh, man, some... they got this bitch some chips. I'm yeah. mad. She's fucking Stop calling me. Isabella has completely shut down. She's closed off and as close to the fetal position as she can get while staying in her chair. Her level of anxiety at this point is astronomical. Don't bring that crazy man back in here, please. So what's the deal? Why the fuck did that guy say that he's my father? Really? <laughs> Come on now. You know why. He's your father. Ew? No. He's sitting in the next room over here, okay, and he's in tears because he wants to know what the hell is going on with his kid. That's not my problem, that's his. Okay. Well, yeah, I guess when you're just a selfish, callous, um, heartless person like yourself, Why are you, you, you would have me? no, you would have no, no feelings whatsoever for your own why father. Why are you insulting me? Clearly you had no feelings for your own mother, so I don't know why... I would be Damn. at all surprised by your demeanor. Um, but yeah, he's wondering why his I own daughter, his own flesh and blood would, uh, would act that been. way. But you know, I just found probably out something different. Be. You want to hear what I found out? What? Okay. You were at H Mart today? Yes? Yes, I'm fucking Asian market. I stopped by there on the way because I needed fucking Can pills. you sit up, please, so I can hear you? Stop talking into I your knees. I stopped by there because I needed some fucking pads. I was hoping somebody right. would be nice enough to let me borrow them, and she actually bought me some shit. Okay, she bought you those clothing items right there? She didn't buy me clothing. Did. The clothes are fucking mine. She bought me the fucking pads and the underwear. The detectives are in possession of more information than Isabella is aware of. Oh. Yet, she continues to lie. That is, until the truth is staring her right in the face. Funny thing just happened. Somebody called the police department from the H Mart. Guess what? They got video down there. Guess what's on that video? Me and H Mart? Because yeah, it's Yeah, you there. and H Mart. Because I was there. Okay. Would you tell those people down there at H Mart it happened to you? That I ran away. No, no, no. There's something else. You told them something else about you. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. Just keeps it worse and worse. Um, sit up. Don't talk, don't talk into your knees. It's disrespectful. What did you tell them? I told them the same shit I told you. No, you told them something else, too. Okay, you know what? I told you the truth about who I am because I have to. You're the police. I'm not required to tell the truth about my life to anyone else. Okay? Let me ask you a question. What? When you went into H-Mart today, were you covered in blood? No. Oh, you 
Yes, you were. Oh, you're shit. on the video. Yeah, you got bitch. You went in the and you told him that you were good. somebody tried to sexually Get assault the fuck you. out. Hey, I have bleeding hands. And they asked what happened to you. Mm -hmm. I have blood all over my hands, yeah, kind of. And I really got the chance to clean it. I left it such a hurry. They gave me some proper nail scoring and shit. I did tell them something that because I needed help, yes. I'm not gonna lie. But I did not tell them about my family and my mom, okay? I did tell them someone tried to kill me, I'm not gonna lie to you, because I don't want them to know all about my family. They're not the police. I don't have to tell them who I am, I just need to help. I'm ashamed of who I am. It's better to be the victim than the abuse. Wolvie, thank girl. you for the five gifted, bro. Yes, I, I appreciate it. Okay, but I have not lied to Yo, you. Yo, Lord Chunky Buns, don't pin shit in this chat room. You I haven't earned that right yet. You us when you sat down you're you you're mod you and training. We need Hut Junior mod. Got him and yes. in the circumstances. Those are mine. That's not the story you told us. The pads they got for me. And they gave me. Yeah, she's scary sandwiches. smart. Yeah, that's like, not, the story not even you smart. Told us, okay? like, Plain and simple, it's not. You told us something completely different. You're scary than me. What the fuck? Didn't you? You told us something completely different. Because you lied. Right? I haven't lied. Yes, you did. That's a lie. Just do the DNA test. It will prove everything. And then I can be happy for the first time in my life. That's all I've ever wanted. I want a true love like I want in my books. The detectives then confront her with yet another piece of evidence. Oh, where they shit. explain that the H Mart video camera shows a bloody Isabella walking into the bathroom. When they checked the contents of the room, they found clothing and bandages, all with large amounts of blood. Isabella only responds by saying that she's being framed for the horrific crime. Stop acting like a victim. I am a victim. No, you're not. You're not a victim of anything. The man who's sitting in the room next door who came in here and identified you he must be as, crazy. A as your father is a victim. <laughs> he must be crazy. It would have made more sense that instead of saying she's not a victim, they could have played into her saying she was mistreated by her mom yeah. and realized the crime and make it less morally reprehensible and therefore more likely that she confesses. That's the only okay. answer I can think your of. Your stepfather, Ryan, is a victim. He must okay. be crazy. Your mother, who is now lying None down of those in the corners of Sarah County. I don't understand how you think I'm her. It's obvious I'm her. <laughs> no, it's... We're not even going there anymore. It's not... We're not debating the fact that it's not you. We just want to know why you did it. Uh, That's not up for argument. I can't go to prison. <laughs> the fuck? Prison. No. Yeah. It really seems as though they think they can just bully her into confessing. I didn't do it. You did a horrible thing. We don't we want to know. Isabella why. did a horrible thing. Stop calling me her name. The detectives once again question Isabella about the reason behind oh, such a you, gruesome bro. act of Love violence. You, How Thank long you had you been kiss, planning bro. to stab your mother and kill her? Yeah. Was it something that just cropped up or were you planning on doing it for a while? Yeah. I really hope you fucking find Isabella. Did your mother say anything to you? I hope I don't fucking end up in prison and then you her. find Isabella instead. I'm like, oh, we saw her, Samantha. We found the bitch. We've given you I all the my opportunities. My life was going to be better when I ran away. I guess that's only going to get worse. I'll probably get fucked in prison too because I'm pretty. Isabella has said multiple times how pretty she is, and this could be a sign of her having narcissistic tendencies. However, it's just as interesting that she switches to show anger and aggression here. When she realizes she's not going to get away and that her story isn't going to work, pretty. she starts acting like the Isabella that her stepdad described. It makes you wonder about the veracity of her delusions. I don't think you're pretty. No. Shut the fuck me. up. Okay, the black. I don't think you are either. <laughs> Isabella turns her body yeah. towards the corner of the room and begins to cry. What the fuck? Likely not for her deceased mother, but rather the fact that she cannot escape the ensuing consequences. It's going to be dark soon. When are the DNA tests going to come back? I don't want to walk around in the dark. You're but going you're, not you're not going, going outside. Man, fuck you. Well, that's the way it's going to be. We're going to have the John Nurse come over. Have a look at the okay. wounds, and then we'll build a top there. She's probably going to go to the hospital. You can just probably in that one. Yeah, we're just kind of making you're the kind of save a jail. Yeah. So, I'm sorry? You're not going to fucking jail unless you fucking photoshop my fucking eyes. Okay. 
<laughs> you see her fucking face. She has fucking brown eyes. Okay. I fucking hate you fucking people. Oh, you people fucking suck. And that bitch is probably fucking crazy as shit and she's gonna go kill somebody else. At least you can take some happiness in that. Well, luckily well, that's not going to happen. I was being happy. I'm going to die. At least you're fucking going down with me. Alrighty. Can you stand up for me? This is for the... Uh, we're going to go over to the hospital and get your hands stitched up, okay? Yeah, that's for the jail. Why? Because that's... We're going to get your hands stitched up. Both of them. Put your hands behind your back. Why? Why are... Ow, ow, ow. That's where I stabbed. Okay. Hang on. Just relax. Because it hasn't been six to eight months yet, like I told you. <laughs> I hate you. I know. <laughs> I My name is Samantha. Right to the end, Isabella refuses to acknowledge her real identity, though there may be an explanation behind her sheer roller coaster of a story. After being charged with the first degree murder of her own mother, authorities still had one unanswered question why? but they would have their long-awaited reasons soon enough. As it turns out, Isabella was suffering from schizophrenia, where she right. experienced delusions for years. But in a shocking revelation, the teenager was supposedly hearing voices oh. and asserted that Yoon Mi was not her Wait. mother, but rather a woman named Cecilia. Had she not taken Cecilia's life, Isabella believed that the world would come to an end. Because of this, she was found not guilty by reason of insanity and transported to the Colorado Mental Health Institute at Pueblo. However, in 2020, seven years after the brutal killing, Isabella claimed that she was ready to be released, stating, I was not myself when I did that, and I have since been restored to full health. In 2021, she was granted permission to leave the facility for therapy, in which she must wear a GPS tracker. However, there's no telling when or if she will ever be permanently released or if her visits outside the facility will be limited Yo. only to therapy sessions.